How's it going guys? This is Max from Lettering Daily and in this video I will teach you three different ways you can add shadows to your lettering using the Procreate app. This is an easy step-by-step -step tutorial suited even for beginners. These techniques can be applied to both hand lettering as well as calligraphy. Before we jump right in, let's have a quick overview of today's video. First, we'll go over the needed tools. After that, I'll start with the first technique called the offset shadow. The second one is gonna be the overlapping shadow. And the third one is known as the cut in shadow. Additionally, I've prepared a bonus technique, so be sure to stick around until the end of this video. Finally, we'll wrap things up with a few final words. In case you prefer reading over watching, I also wrote a full article on this topic. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. So without any further delays, let's get straight to it. So what tools do we need for this tutorial? Since this is an iPad lettering tutorial, you will of course need an iPad Pro and an Apple Pen. Aside from the iPad and the Apple Pen, you will also need the Procreate app. In this tutorial, I'm using the Procreate 5.0 version, but it might be different depending on when you're watching this video. Finally, I'll use various Procreate brushes that I'll mention throughout the video as I'm explaining the different shading techniques. So let's get started with our shading methods. Method 1 is called the Offset Shadow. I chose this as a first method since it's demonstrating clearly how light casts a shadow to an object. In our case, the object will be the letters. So step one is create your letters. You can pick whatever style or technique you prefer. I already created my lettering so we can focus solely on creating these effects. I went for a rougher and texture script lettering. For this lettering piece, I use the rough and raw brushes and I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check them out. Step 2. Duplicate your layers. Head over to your layers panel, swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it. Step 3. Pick your color. Select the layer underneath, click on the thumbnail image and select the alpha lock feature. Pick a complementary color to your lettering. My letters are yellow, so I'll go for a purple shade. Keep in mind that since I'm working on a dark, in this particular example it's a black background, I should pick brighter colors so they contrast and stand out well enough. If you're working on a lighter background, do the opposite of that. Once you've selected your color, click on the thumbnail once again and select Fill Layer. It will automatically color your layer in the currently selected color. After that, remember to turn off the alpha lock mode. Step 4 is offset your lettering. Once you've colored your layer, select it by hitting the arrow on the top left corner. It will select everything in your layer. The direction of where you will move your layer, aka shadow, depends on where your light source comes from. Essentially, the choice is yours. Ok, it's theory time. Generally speaking, the rule is that the shadow is cast on the opposite side of your light source. In my example, I will imagine that the light source is coming from my top left corner, meaning that the shadow will be cast on the bottom right corner. Once again, the opposite of the top left is bottom right. Pretty simple, right? So coming back to my example, select your lower layer and move it down on the right by tapping on the bottom right corner. You see, by tapping, instead of moving it with a pen, you're moving the lettering in small increments, which allows you to increase your precision. Now, a quick very important note. We want to keep our letters connected with the second layer, so avoid any larger gaps, otherwise the next step won't really work. Step 5 is duplicate the top layer. Open the layer panel, select the top layer and duplicate it. Step 6 is move the middle layer. Select the layer in the middle and move it halfway between the pink and the top yellow lettering. You do that by simply tapping a few times in the same spot as before, which is the bottom right corner. You can also reduce the middle layer's opacity so you can better see where you're moving it. Step 7. It's showtime, baby! So, you have your layer where it should be and now it's time to finalize it. Select the middle layer, touch on the thumbnail image and click on select. While it's selected, 
turn off the visibility of that layer, go on the bottom layer, select the eraser brush and make sure to choose the big hard airbrush. With the airbrush as an eraser, go over the whole piece. It will delete the mid layer and leave you with a perfect offset shadow. When you're done, feel free to delete the middle layer. And that's it guys, a very simple yet fantastic looking shadow effect. Here you can see a before and after shot and how much this effect can elevate your lettering. Method 2, the overlapping shadow. This shading method is called overlapping, well at least I call it like that because that's precisely what it does. Uh, the shadow adds depth, making it seem as the strokes are overlapping each other. It's one of my favorite techniques and it's really fun to create. A quick note, this shading style best fits with a bit thicker strokes. You can still use it even if you're working with thinner letter forms, I just think it looks a bit better when you're working with thicker strokes. So let's get started. Step 1. Create your lettering. I already created some sweet lettering for this. I used the brushes from the Kickoff Lettering Toolkit, which is a fantastic brush pack and I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. Step 2. Create a new layer. Create a new and empty layer above your lettering. Click on the thumbnail icon and select the clipping mask feature. This will create a mask on the lettering layer underneath so we can work without making a mess. Step 3. Pick the right color. Before we add our shadow, we need to pick the right color. Since my letters are in a bright mint green color, I will simply go with a darker shade of that color. I do that by going into the classic color selection and just lowering the brightness bar, which is the one on the bottom, like this. You can also try to play with different color combos, I just prefer the more subtle version. Step 4. Create the shadows. Ok, so we have our clipping mask and our color is all set up and now we can start adding the shadows. I will use the powdery brush from the rough and raw brush pack for the shades. I enjoyed the effect I can create with this brush, but you feel free to use any other brush. In case you're not sure which one to pick, I can suggest you to use the soft airbrush. Start applying the darker shade on every spot where the strokes overlap and letters connect. A helpful trick to know where these overlaps occur is to imagine how you write the letters from start to finish. Think of it as following a trail, it will help you visualize these overlaps. Apply more pressure on the beginning of the overlaps and as you move further away from them, just apply less pressure. Try to create a sort of gradient effect. The idea is to go from darker to lighter. It will add more depth and it will just look so much better. Repeat the same process for all the letter connections and overlapping areas. Step 5 is delete the scraps. Ok, once you are done, grab the eraser tool and pick yourself a nice outlining brush. I will pick the wet inker brush from the Kickoff Lettering Toolbox brush pack because it's the same brush I used for outlining this piece at the beginning. You feel free to use any other brush you like. Just make sure it leaves a solid mark and it allows you to do some precise line work. While still being on the masked layer, zoom in closely and start deleting the unnecessary shading parts. Take your time and do it nicely and precisely. And that's it, congrats, you successfully created the overlapping shading technique. Yay! Here you can see the before and after shot and, and how much better it actually looks with the shadows. Ok, method 3, the cut in shadow. In my opinion, this shading technique is the easiest one. You don't have to worry about working with multiple layers or anything similar. It's also the most subtle effect compared with the other ones. Step 1 is of course create your lettering. I went for some brush calligraphy for this one and I used the Crayola Texture Pro brush from the lettering brushes pack and uh, I'll leave a link in the description in case you wanna check them out. However, feel free to use any brush or lettering style you prefer. Step 2 is identifying your cuts. The idea here is quite similar to the overlapping shadow technique we previously created. The cut in shadow will go on all the places where the letters either overlap or connect. We are cutting certain parts out to create the illusion of shadows. It will look as certain parts go on top of each other. Here is an example, I marked all the areas where the letters connect and overlap. Step 3 is create the cuts. 
Once we know where the cuts should go, we can start creating them. First, duplicate your layer so you have a copy in case you mess it up or you simply want to do some other sort of effect later on. Start cutting the parts that we marked in the previous step, like this. In most cases, these cuts will have some sort of triangle looking shape. And yeah, just go over the whole piece and do the cuts for all the, all the spots that we marked in the previous step, like this. And that's it guys, you successfully created the cut in shadow technique. Here is the before and after. As you can see, it's quite subtle as I said, and depending on the occasion, this could work much better than the other two effects that we just did previously. Okay, so as I mentioned at the introduction of this video, I decided to add a bonus technique. This one is called the long casted shadow because it's it's quite obvious that's what it is. It's a it's a just a long shadow, yeah. Uh, so let's get started. Step one is create your lettering. Again, <laughs> whether you prefer hand lettering or calligraphy, it's going to work either way, doesn't matter. I already have my lettering piece prepared. I use the beautiful brush from my brush calligraphy pack, but you can use any brush you, you prefer. I'll leave a link in the description for my brush pack in case you want to check it out. Step two is create a black box. Create a new layer and place it under your lettering. Select the black color and from the top of the right corner, simply drag the black color onto the layer and drop it there. It will color the whole layer into that color that you selected and in our case it's the black color. Open up the layer panel and lower the black overlay's opacity so you can see the background underneath. That should be around 50% more or less. Step 3 is adjust the black box. Click on the arrow in the top left corner and that will select the whole box or basically everything that is in your layer. While you're in the selection mode, you can adjust the size and position of the box. Once again, we are imagining the light source coming from the top left corner, meaning that the shadow will be cast on the bottom right side. So adjust the black box in that direction. Make sure that the edges of the box are reaching the furthest points of your lettering. Those will most likely be your first and last letters, unless you have some crazy flourishing going on in your lettering piece. Also, make sure that it covers the whole lower area, so we want the shadow to extend all the way to the bottom. It should look a little something like this here. Step 4 is remove the top parts. Now we need to delete certain parts from the top. So, how the hell do we know which parts to remove exactly? Well, it's easy. You need to think about which parts are above others. I know that sounds confusing, but hear me out. So, these parts that I'm marking right now are the highest parts, and everything else is unnecessary. Before I start erasing the unnecessary parts, I will use a few guidelines to keep it nice and straight with the original angle we have on each side. Open up a new layer and draw a straight line along the edge using a contrasting color, like this. Now duplicate that layer and place the next line on the next marked point, like this. Repeat the same thing for all the marked spots. Once we have placed all the guidelines, go back to your black box layer and start deleting everything above each line. I'll speed up this part so you can see the process. I think once you see how it should look like, it will make much more sense. Now that you are done, feel free to remove the white guidelines and marks that we had in place. As you can see, I still need to clean it up a bit. Okay, now it looks much better. But wait, we still have one final step here. Step 5 is adding the gradient. Open up a new layer above the shadows and below the lettering, so it's in the middle. Go on your shadow layer and tap on the thumbnail image, hit the select feature and hide that layer. Go back to your empty layer in the middle, select a darker shade of your background. In my example it's going to be some sort of Bordeaux color, which is actually one of my favorite colors. And pick the soft airbrush. Increase the size of that soft airbrush 
and reduce the opacity of the brush by half. Start applying the darker shade from top to bottom to create some sort of gradient effect. You should have something looking a bit like this. And that's how you create the long drop shadow effect. I know it seems a bit intimidating the first time you do it, but trust me, it's really not that difficult and it really gives a nice touch to your lettering. I promise you that after the second or even third time you do it, it's gonna feel so much easier. Here is a before and after shot and you can see the difference. And there you have it friends, three or actually four different ways you can add shadows to your lettering using the Procreate app. Which of these shading techniques do you like the most? Or actually, which shading technique do you want to try out first? Let me know by dropping a comment below. If you decide to create one of these effects, be sure to send me a DM on Instagram so I can give you a story shout out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful for you. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with my future upcoming videos. I really enjoy creating these tutorials so believe me more of them are coming soon. Thank you for watching this video and until the next time, stay awesome guys, cheers!